Hello everybody, this is Peter, the rock slash Lord Rock, or whatever Dave Figley is calling me today, I don't know. I'm in a wood and I'm looking actually back the way I've come. And I haven't filmed in this wood before. This is one of the recommended routes from Chalfont and Latimer Station, joining up with the Chess River Valley Walk. It's not a, not a route I use that much because I prefer the more, uh, I don't know, open air route. But this is, makes a nice change to be in a pleasant wood on such a summer's day. I, I, I don't know, sometimes I talk in, in song titles. You know, I'm really tempted to burst into song every now and then. Um, now, uh, one of the interesting, by the way, it's uh, Sunday the 25th of August. One of the interesting things about woods, certainly around here, is that now and then there are, well, you can only describe them as craters. And um, they always intrigued me. I think there are two or three along this path. Um, they're quite deep and I still don't know why they are there. But I, I surmise that, in fact, uh, they were used to excavate flint, which uh, down the centuries has been a major um, uh, building, building uh, uten utensil, um, artifact. Uh, but I could be wrong. I mean, my, there, there is another word across the valley there, across the Chess River Valley, which you can, we can't really see through the trees, uh, the top of which is Latimer House, wherein used to reside one uh, uh, Rudolf Hess. And there are a few huge craters in the wood near where he resided. And I used to speculate that, in fact, the, uh, the, the Germans got wind of the fact that he was holed up there, and why wouldn't they? and thought it's better to finish him off before he talks too much and therefore bombed the place but missed causing all these craters. Now this is me interpreting uh, features of the landscape in possibly totally the wrong way but I always say an interpretation is better than nothing. I don't always say that but I've just said it now. Anyway Walking, I'm walking quite steeply down hill. Well, I'm not walking steeply, but the hill is, is quite steep. And um, I'm reminded uh, of a little anecdote. I, I was quite uh, amazed at the response I had to my um, uh, story long time in the past about a lady I met um, whose middle name was Marjorie. And I thought people would uh, leave this YouTube channel in droves but no they seem to be fairly encouraging or interested and uh, have similar stories of their own especially when it comes to things like uh, discrimination. Um, now uh, I'm not going to talk about discrimination today but I am going to talk about hills. Now um, Holland is a very flat place. Uh, there virtually aren't any hills I don't know what the highest point of Holland is, maybe 30 feet or something. You'd have to ask Tim, the time traveller, that. But um, I once went to a test match at, uh, at the Oval. This is back in the 90s. And uh, play ended early. I think England lost. Might have been to New Zealand. And... Uh, people were at a bit of a loose end because the play had ended early. So, you know, a few drifted into the nearby pub whose name escapes me, and as did I. And I saw a lady there standing at the bar uh, ordering a drink, and um, I couldn't resist chatting to her. And, of course, she could have brushed me off or said anything to get rid of me at any point, but somehow we engaged in, in a friendly conversation and ended up being friends for quite a long time. Um, now to cut a long story short, 
uh, she invited me over to her, she was Dutch, she invited me over to her house in, in Holland and uh, I did go over there and stay there and uh, that was quite an adventure because I was going to get the ferry from Harwich or somewhere and uh, I, the train at Liverpool Street left dead on time and I was at Liverpool Street station about 10 seconds too late and the guard said oh you can't get on this train it's going so I had to uh, find another way to get to ho that part of Holland that she lived in and and the, the, they were very helpful the British Rail people and they sorted out a route for me going down to Dover and getting a ferry across to France and then three trains through France, Belgium and Holland and I ended up at the same destination as I would have done um, by a totally different route. So that, that was very impressive, uh, helped out. But um, there were no hills um, in Holland, um, but there were plenty of woods, I suppose. But it's very nice. It turned out that this lady had a most unusual name. Now, in English, we'd call her, call her Gertrude, which is kind of, kind of not a very nice name. But in Dutch, it's Hoytrui which is G-E-R-T-R-U-I. Very pleasant lady. And uh, she, in fact, was the coach of the Dutch junior cricket team, I seem to remember. And uh, she was very keen on cricket and therefore was at the test match. But very intelligent, very beautiful lady. Um, we had a, a good friendship for a, quite a long time. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> it, you know, as David Jason used to say in o Only Fools and Horses, in his Del Boy, persona, who dares wins? And it's quite rarely, it's really rarely, only two or three times in my life, have I approached a, a lady who seems to be on their own and, and I suppose you could say, chatted her up but uh, I thought I'd relate the the, the episode with her try um, this is well before this is back in the 90s or possibly 80s this is well before uh, the internet of course um, so we'd communicate by letter <laughs> and I seem to remember the postage was the same anywhere in Europe then as it, as it is within the UK. So that didn't matter particularly. And um, it, it kind of, you know, petered out as a lot of friendships do. And uh, so I wonder, I think it's extremely unlikely that she's watching uh, Peter the Rock videos, but uh, I imagine, you know, she's uh, moved on. Uh, the Dutch did very well at the Olympics. I don't know if she had anything to do with that, but mostly in the rowing. Uh, so that's that's a story. There was no discrimination involved. You know, she was uh, she spoke very good English. I didn't really speak any Dutch, but then all the Dutch speak very good English. It always shames me when I go to places like uh, Holland or France or Germany that the locals speak far better English than I speak their language, even though I learnt uh, bits of it at school. That's the story. Uh, if you don't want any more of this sort of stuff, let me know and I won't do any more. But um, I, I, I thought I'd uh, mention it by, because, because I was walking down a hill. Thanks for watching. It's Sunday the 25th of, of uh, August. Cheers. Like and subscribe.